why do you think it's important to work on our pronunciation and how did working on your pronunciation in Spanish help you or what did it give you? Mm -hmm. I love this question because it's just so, uh, so close to home with my own experience, which is why I feel so passionately or passionate about helping other people in this. Um, so this has a lot to do with confidence as well in, in my personal opinion and experience. So once I realized that I could be in control of the way that I wanted to sound and the way I wanted people to perceive me and the identity I wanted to have in my second language, everything changed. Because for so many years, I thought it was all just like left to chance. And I was like, okay, one day I'll sound as good as I want to, or one day I'll sound like a native speaker or one day, but I had no plan or action, like how to get there. I just thought it was something you just had to practice, practice, practice. And of course that's part of it, but I'm also a person that needs like, I just need someone to tell me how, mm -hmm. like I oftentimes, those certain things that I just won't pick up on my own. I just need someone to tell me how. And it wasn't a need for me to work on pronunciation. Like people could understand me fine. I had, you know, relationships. I was building with people in Spanish. I could travel. I could do whatever. And people would understand. But I wanted to identify with a certain personality and a certain kind of um, feeling of who I wanted to be. And for me, it was really important to feel like I could control the way I sounded. That was a, a key factor there. So I remember the first sound when I uh, took Spanish phonetics and phonology in college. The first sound that they they taught me was the difference between the English D sound and the the Spanish D sound. And by just my, I remember my professor telling me just how to move my tongue in a different way. And I said a word and it sounded just like I had always wanted it to sound my entire life. And it was like the most, it was like the biggest breakthrough ever for me. And that's when I, just, since that moment, I just got hooked on like understanding pronunciation differences. Because I was like, I can change it if I want to. And then since that very moment, it became a goal of mine to be like, I am going to control how I want to sound in each moment because it is up to me. It's not just up to chance. Right. Yep. This is so good. Such a great explanation. You can be in control of how you sound. So this is mm -hmm. up to you. Yep. I love it. Um, okay. The next one is, what do you think is best to focus on first? Pronunciation or vocabulary because a lot of language learners are obsessed with vocabulary the more the better yeah but pronunciation yeah. is overlooked yeah exactly i think like when we're beginners in a language i really think they should go hand in hand uh, we learn a lot more vocabulary at the beginning just to be able to express those basic ideas which is really important but if we don't feel comfortable in the way we say the word that's also an issue so for a language that's very, very different and even has a different alphabet than how, right. uh, or especially if it has a different alphabet from what our native language is, I think it's really important to always have pronunciation integrated into, um, into whatever learning experience you're having. But once you're already at like an intermediate level, you have that basic vocabulary, you have that basic grammar. In my personal opinion, pronunciation and prosody more than anything, even more than pronunciation, prosody. So uh, for anyone who's not familiar with that, that's like the intonation, the rhythm, the up and down, the flow, the feel, the musicality of English. And that is much more important for emphasizing your message and conveying your message with conviction than any vocabulary is. Because you can have the best vocabulary in the world, but if you're using really complex or long, especially like multi-syllabic words, and you don't know where to stress them or how to emphasize them, then all you're going to have is a ton of really powerful, impactful words, but all being stressed in different ways, or you don't know how to convey your message in the way you want to. And people aren't going to feel like it was a coherent thing that you said because you weren't focused enough on your pronunciation prosody patterns so that people could hear what they were expecting to hear. Right. Because oftentimes when you say something, if you say an individual word, people know what it is, it's fine. But if we change things a lot within a sentence or a paragraph or a speech that we're giving, people subconsciously, they're not listening word by word, they're listening to, to the overall message you're saying. Um, so if they're getting confused about the idea or, or they're not sure what the um, stress or the focus of your sentences and thoughts are, that's probably going to have a lot to do with the way you're organizing things and the way you're, you're stressing within your prosody and, and intonation patterns in English. Right. So 
pronunciation for me has always been way more important than vocabulary. True, and I was right. not aware of that for 95% of my life, of course, because we just write what we write and speak what we speak, and it's all normal to us. But uh, mm -hmm. what I alluded to before when I was in Slovakia and I started analyzing, first of all, my own speech, then some others with some research, I discovered it really is a different language, so different. Uh, so advice to students is to be patient in that process. It's true what you speak and think you should speak and what you hear from us isn't what's on paper and in the classroom. It turns out that we chop off consonant sounds, we combine words, we change vowel sounds to other vowel sounds, which is sometimes crazy, sometimes understandable. Um, and the final version of what we speak, they'd like to say it's fast speech, but I don't like that. I think that's a bit of a misnomer because mm -hmm. This is, this is fast speech. If I speak fast, I do this. Now I talk fast. This is fast. This is me talking fast, 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 fast. But that's not really what we do when we talk. What we do is we chop off sounds. We change longer vowels to shorter sounding vowels. And the final version of what I speak just takes less time. Some consonant sounds too. I, right. I've noticed that uh, my tongue will go and make 20% of it or 10% of it, which I've learned is enough for me as the sender of the message to give the native speaker's ears just enough hint that yeah, there's a th there. Yeah, there's a, an r there. There's a d there. I don't know how to teach that or coach that exactly yet. Uh, I've been working on some of that, but uh, that's a part of the phenomenon too. So we speak, I don't know, 60% of what you would write on paper, but that's the final version. It's not faster. I still have to make every sound there, but it's fewer sounds and some of them are shorter than the originals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different language. Yeah. When I started incorporating all of these tips that you gave me uh, into my speech and uh, into my videos I got a lot of people like um, saying that I'm speaking too fast and they just can't uh. understand me some people well you know different people different opinions so no. but a lot of people said that I'm speaking fast and I was like I'm not speaking fast any native speaker uh, who who will listen to me will tell them that I'm not speaking fast. It's like, I'm speaking pretty slowly actually, but I'm just using this, what I, what I call, what we call here language learners, connected speech and reductions. And to me, it sounds better. It sounds more natural and I like it better. So when I'm listening to myself and when I'm editing my videos, I'm more satisfied with the outcome because it, it sounds better than when I spoke, for example, a year and a half ago, let's say. I didn't use yeah. all these things and it sounded a little robotic for me. So. Yeah, I think I even told you about that. I'm seeing some old video that I saw of yours. Uh, it was excellent, outstanding speech and pronunciation, but I noticed as I'm listening, my native speaker ears wanted to pull in the message faster because I can process the data much more quickly. Give it to me faster. Right. Not faster like this, like talk fast, fast, but just without spaces, with the proper connections, with the proper changes in sounds. And it's... it causes a little impatience even in, in me as a listener now okay. it's different talking to you now and recently it's different and it's it's yeah. connected it's at the right pace it's we just we love for some reason english is like this melodic version of syllables where we love starting with a consonant sound ending with a vowel sound every syllable and we rearrange words to do that we take syllables uh, you know ending consonants from one put it with the vowel of the next you would never believe what the final version looks like if we were supposed to write it in words. And it's all those syllables. English is all syllables. It isn't really words. Yeah. Uh, well, I would believe because you showed me. Oh, <laughs> so okay. now I know. Well, you, the audience, may not uh, yeah. believe it until you see some of it, how crazy it is when I take the N off of in and put it with the schwa A next to it and make it in, na uh, for in A. And, uh, what, uh, and yeah, we can go on forever mm -hmm. on those, but how we really deconstruct it into a different song, really. Yeah. And that's what it is. That's what's on TV. That's what's in movies. That's what uh, your friends are. If you know them in the U.S., that's what they're doing.